These are not really the richest people in the world. These are the self-made billionaire poster boys presented as the richest people in the world to perpetuate the idea that consumer capitalism is a merit system. We need to move away from the idea that all money is created equal. Money doesn't really have value. Money just kind of represents value. The thing is, when it comes to calculating how much relative value certain things actually have, the market is kind of mathematical mathematically illiterate. Lots of things have incredibly overinflated value. Like you think the apartment you're renting is actually worth 1.5 million dollars? Come on. Like this guy owns 9% of Amazon and according to the market that means he's worth like 202 billion dollars. But what is Amazon actually worth? What does it get its value from? They produce some things themselves but mostly they sell and deliver shit produced by other people. They're a middleman service. Which means most of their value comes from their infrastructure which is mostly driven by labor. That's human life. Labor is human beings selling their time and energy so essentially their life in exchange for money. Which means that the less your life, your time, your effort, your energy, your labor is worth relative to the market, the more Jeff Bezos, Amazon, and other companies like it are worth relative to the market. Which is done through inflation, right? When the value of money goes down relative to the price of goods and services, that means that the value of labor goes down. Unless people's salary also goes up, which of course it doesn't, which means that people have to work more hours to afford the same goods and services, which means every hour of their life has become less valuable in the eyes of the market. And that's what Jeff Bezos' magnificent pile of wealth is actually made of, right? Primarily it's a big stack of employment contracts where people are being coerced into selling their labor, selling their time, selling their lives for less than they're actually worth. When you think about it like that, that's a pretty fragile pile, right? That's sensitive to a lot of potential catastrophe. That's essentially always one proper employee strike or one proper consumer strike away from almost total obliteration. Like, do we really believe that that makes you the richest man alive? Do we really believe that that is the most valuable thing that a human being can own? Between them, BlackRock and Vanguard control wealth in the tens of trillions. So, whose wealth is that? Well, a lot of it is retirement funds from all over the world, so technically some of it might be yours. But really, who technically owns the money is frankly less interesting than who has the influence to control it. See, they both own major shares of basically the whole economy, including Apple, Microsoft, Meta, but also including Tesla and including Amazon. But also, they both own shares of each other, and they both own shares of all the major banks and all the major banks own shares of them. It's a giant intricate circular web of money weaving in on itself, making it impossible to tell who's actually in charge. But it is quite evident that somebody is using this wealth to manipulate the political and economic state of the world according to a quite specific agenda. Somebody definitely has their hand on the scale here. But I don't think you're supposed to be able to figure out who. They have a marked impact on the way the economy is managed. Larry Fink of BlackRock was basically put in charge of handling the bailouts in 2008, despite BlackRock being heavily invested in the banks that were being bailed out, despite Larry Fink having a personal hand in creating the subprime mortgage crisis that led to the crash in the first place. He deliberately influenced the narrative in entertainment, the narrative in media, the narrative in marketing. They have a direct hand in the information that you have access to, but also how it is presented to you. So when we're talking about who actually are the wealthiest people in the world, and we think from the perspective of someone who controls the institutions, that controls the narrative, that controls the way humanity interprets reality, and we're talking about people who influence the institutions, that control the institutions, that control and circulate the supply of money itself, what does wealth mean? from that perspective? Is it really who has the biggest pile of money? Does that make sense? If I was a person like that, 
somebody with the power to leverage your own retirement fund against you, I'd probably make sure to invest some of my power into making sure you had no idea who I was, and some of my power into making sure you had some faces to associate with the idea of wealth and power that weren't mine.